Hello everyone! This is Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today with a new yarn dyeing experiment. Dyeing yarn with wine. I have thrown um, many parties where you know we have guests bring bottles of wine and then there have been many half open bottles of wine at the end. And so then you know a lot of this wine that doesn't get refrigerated ends up getting thrown out. What a waste! Why not use wine that you aren't going to drink or that maybe has, you know, the taste has gone off, um, use it and try to dye yarn. Well, first we'll see if this experiment works and then maybe I'll recommend that you try to use it to dye yarn. So we're going to dye um, Bear Wool of the Andy, or sorry, Bear Peruvian Highland Wool Fingering Weight from Knit Picks and I'm going to add it to the wine dry. I'm deciding to do this because it would be really cool if we can get some mottled color. We may need to supplement um, this dye bath with additional water depending on if there ends up being enough wine for coverage. And so for this experiment I'm using um, Charles Shaw um, Merlot. Now, Charles Shaw is um, found at Trader Joe's and can also be uh, affectionately called Two Buck Chuck. So it is a inexpensive bottle of wine. Um, and so I just emptied it into the pot and I'm going to use paper towel to just give a sense. And the color, you know, it's a very beautiful deep color. Um, and I am going to turn on the heat. Now my plan is to heat this up, add the yarn, and then add additional water if necessary. But Rebecca, you may ask, aren't you forgetting something? The components that you need to dye yarn are color, you know, you need the yarn, you need heat, and you also need it to be acidic. So, you know, and that's what we do with food coloring. So, but what about wine? How acidic is wine? Well, it happens that I have some pH paper, so we can test this out. Now first, I have some water that I used, or that I didn't use, that I prepared to add dye to. And so this is one cup of water with one and a half teaspoons of white vinegar. And I am just going to quickly check the pH. you see? Okay, so this is so probably somewhere between a pH of 5 and 6. It's definitely not a pH of 4. Clearly, you know, vinegar is acidic, and so we know that that's acidic. Now, I have not yet any, done any experimentation on the ideal pH to dye yarn. So, doing a quick Google search, my suspicions are confirmed and that wine is most definitely most definitely acidic and I read that a lot of wines have a pH around 3.5 and again you can't really see the colors on the screen very well but so what I thought could just be coloration from the wine on the pH paper really it could be that this wine has a pH between somewhere th 3 or 4 so you know maybe it's again it's hard to tell because the red of the wine could contribute uh, to the color scale, but it is absolutely acidic and so therefore should be a good condition to dye yarn. Now whether or not this is at a full boil yet, I don't know, um, you know, but it's certainly simmering and I am going to add the yarn. Um, I'm using a spoon to poke it down. But look at that gorgeous color. Um, if this works, oh, it'll be delightful. Now, another, I guess, downside to using wine to dye yarn, you know, assuming that it's going to work, right, of course, is that uh, there's sugar and other stuff in wines. So you're going to need to wash um, your yarn carefully to 
All right, I'm going to need to add some water because most of the liquid is going into the yarn. Um, and I don't want the yarn to burn. <laughs> so I'm just adding some plain tap water, no vinegar or anything. Um, I don't think that we need a higher um, acidity. But so from me pouring it in, you can see that no color has taken so far. Okay, so I added probably about four cups of water. Um, yeah, bringing it to about 1,750 mils. Um, Go. Oh, I really hope this works. So, 10 minutes have elapsed since we were last on camera, and there isn't, you know, really any exhaustion that you can see from the dye bath. Um, so, I am going to let this simmer gently for you know, another 10 minutes. So we are now 20 minutes into our giant experiment. And there seems to be just as much color as ever. Um, and so I'm now going to add, try adding a little water. And okay, well that's good. So we added some water and we saw that the color in that spot lightened, but it looks like some color is, you know, it wasn't as white as it was the first time I poured some additional water onto the yarn. So I am now feeling like, hooray, we are adding color, um, but we may be stuck with like a dusty rose color. We may not end up with a vibrant, you know, burgundy like I was hoping, but certainly we should get some form of color because if you've ever spilled red wine on a white carpet or, you know, you know that red wine can stain wools. Um, most carpets are made out of wool. So we'll just have to keep waiting and see what happens. So we're now about 40 minutes in. I have to say that this does not smell very good. <laughs> Um, but, yeah, so, I'm curious about adding, oh, I guess it wasn't like that, adding a little more water just to see. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's getting darker or not. Um, you know, it's possible that it become saturated at some point. Um, so I'm going to let this go for another 20 minutes, which will give it a total of an hour simmering in the pot. And then I'm going to turn off the heat and let it cool. So we've been simmering for an hour and I'm now going to turn the heat off because if we haven't really had a substantial increase um, in the amount of color in a while, um, I don't want Well, there ha definitely is color that appears to be bonded um, to the yarn, but I'm going to let this sit in the wine and cool off as long as it takes, um, maybe even overnight. So the yarn, the yarn has been sitting in this wine solution overnight, and I guess, no, it's not easy to tell, but there definitely is still color in the water. Um, I'm just squeezing out some of the wine in case I decide to reuse this bath.
but now it's time to rinse. And I've got cold water right here. And, you know, and we're rinsing up the yarn and hoping that we get some color behind. Now, unlike red food coloring, which stick really well, we will expect to see a lot of um, color come out of this. And, you know, I will also add that while, you know, we aren't seeing a bright, vibrant burgundy like we thought, um, and like we had hoped, if the color that we have right now stays, it is a really pretty brownish purple. I mean, the color is stunning. So, it's just not... <laughs> a deep red, and so, you know, I wouldn't exactly name the color of this yarn Merlot, because that's not accurate, even though, well, it's accurate to see what the color is made from. Um, you can see already the water is running clear, and most of this color is in fact staying in the yarn. But I am not going to um, stop washing it here. I'm going to wash it for another couple of rounds of soap and stuff because of the reasons that I mentioned earlier in the video. But there being sugar and other things we don't want to stay in yarn in wine. So I'll make sure that it's rinsed thoroughly and then hang it up to dry. So here we have it, our Merlot dyed yarn, which turned out to be kind of a uh, m nice mocha um, chocolate milk kind of color. It's a reddish brown, um, but the color is still quite nice. Um, certainly not a burgundy as one would expect from dyeing yarn with red wine. But it was still a success in that we were able to stain, you know, dye yarn with wine. So anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you for watching this dyeing experiment.